So it's rotation time then. Let's go take a look. Okay. Oh, look, does it? All right. Okay. And we got a brand new uh, tier. Okay, we got a brand new collection. It's a uh, it's a small rotation. It's an oh Thanksgiving. Okay, that actually happened. The only I repeat, the only Thanksgiving theme skin that was submitted this week, and it gets accepted. Zinc. There you go. He, he understood what to do. There you go. <laughs> Soul Eater continues. Congratulations, Delarai. Neon Vibes continues. Congratulations, Diaz. Congratulations to Multi Hat Boris with his brand new collection there. But yeah, we got some more burlap stuff. Oh bugger, we better go buy into that. Uh, wait, yeah, chat, you sit there. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, just gonna, just gonna, just gonna go buy some skins. Don't worry, you don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. Stop looking. Right here. Oh, oh, there's hardly anything there. <laughs> there's hardly anything there. Well, there you go. Um. We got some burlap stuff, and that's the first time that's happened since, like, January? It's been a long time. So I hope you enjoy looking at that price, because it's not going to be that price anymore. Not anymore, no. <laughs> there you go. Okay, well, that happened. Um, so uh, I guess we need to go do some builders now. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll skip ahead, and then uh, we'll start discussing, um, like, abnormals and whatnot, and then talking about all the brand new skins in terms of investments. So with that... You've got yourself a Soul Eater Sar. You've got yourself the Neon Vibes Sheet Metal Door. That means the garage door's probably going to get attacked right now. Um, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Look at that. Who bought them? Who bought them? Who bought them? Come on, stand up. Who bought them? Who's bought some? Who actually owns any of these? Abyss. What do you mean, Abyss? Wait, what? Did Abyss just randomly get accepted? Oh. I fucking knew it. <laughs> really? Ah, oh, come. I'm not even that surprised. Oh, they still adding more skins, do you reckon? I'll oh, just sneak in an extra five. Come on, you know, give me that legendary uh, kilt. Come on, face punch. I know you're watching me. Just sneak in that legendary kilt. You know you want some extra money just before Christmas. Just sneak in that legendary kilt. It's all I need. No, just give me that. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. All right, fuck it. We just got ourselves an extra Abyss AR. They are panicking at Facebook <laughs> because there was almost no AK this week. Exactly that. Exactly that. That. <laughs> uh, well, uh, that happened. And, um, yeah, that happened. And uh, that happened. So, yeah, everything that was expected to happen basically happened. But what about the garage door? Neon vibes. Also, the hay box. So, if I type in hay, that's probably going to get attacked. Is it? There's hardly anything there. And uh, then we go to neon neon vibes. And what do we have? Come on, show me. Don't be scared. There we go. Right. So, there's only 28 of these in the Steam market. This is a very weird thing that happened. So all the skins that came out during that week where the skins were only available for six days. Oh, yeah, there you go. K13's attacking this as well. Um, yeah, no resistance. Easily rises up in price. Now, the Bioders still don't really match up to uh, its $3.49 price. But if we do potentially see a deplorable collection getting started, I say that all the time. I'm very sorry. But, yeah, you, you get the idea. People like straightforward neon designs, and that has actually done okay in terms of retaining its value. But then again, going back over to here, all the skins from this batch have hardly any listings on the Steam market. And, like, they still sold, like, in the thousands and whatnot, but it doesn't really fully explain why none of these skins have at least 30 quantity on the Steam market. Every single one of them has less than 30 on the Steam market. Again, don't know why. It's weird, but, hey... Um, yeah, uh, it, all the better for them to rise up in price when there is a spike in demand. So, you understand that, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, we just did some bilders there, so... Got the bard down on the Bandito's hoodie and pants. Still waiting for the, uh, the coffee can, so... We just got to, you know, chase after that for the moment. So, back to it. Right, we're back. So, it's been about just over an hour since the rust all rotated. Initially, we had eight skins, but then the AK appeared, so now we've got nine, but that's not an issue. But the first thing that we should do is take a look at all the skins and figure out which these skins are and uh, which skins are and are not abnormal. So, let's just go ahead and look at all of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine skins. 
First up, the AK, that is abnormal. Then we have the likes of the uh, Tier 3. Both of those are abnormal. Then we have the likes of the Desert Beast Burlap Clothing. They're not abnormal. So that's going to be something we'll be talking about. Then you have the likes of the Hay Sleeping Bag. This isn't abnormal. The Neon Vibe Sheet Middle Door is abnormal. The Soli Tassar is not abnormal. And the Thanksgiving Turkey Furnace is not abnormal. Which means we have one, two, three, four abnormal skins this week. Which would mean the other five are not abnormal they will become marketable when the next rust ore appears. So you understand the routine. I'm sure you get it by now. Here's a quick look at all the skins from the past week because these appear to be their final sales. Get a good look at all of that. The Frontier Rustic Garage Door only just about reached 11,500 subscribers, aka bare minimum 11,500 sales. That's not that much. In the grand scheme of things, for a garage door that has transparency, that seems very low. This is something we've noticed throughout all of November. Very low sales. And this is something we should consider for the next batch of skins that we just got. So that's cool. Uh, get a good look at all of these sales. So like even the kilt had just about, just barely over 11,000 sales. The other pieces of the tier two, just barely over 10,000. So the questionable thing here is what's going to happen to this whole collection? Is there actual genuine demand for these skins? Or will it all suffer? We'll see over the course of the next two months. And uh, will we actually see the continuations of Bandito's hoodie and pants appearing soon? Or will they even ever appear? Will this AK hold up? Will these tools potentially be manipulated? These tools had barely any sales. Only 4,000 bare minimum sales for the pickaxe and just over 4,500 sales for the hatchet. We have to be very wary for manipulations because they're happening all the time and many people are going to try and manipulate skins but keep them disguised and hidden away because when all skins are hyped up and increase in price around January time, you know, post-Christmas time, it's a lot easier to hide that. And they can just keep inflating the values of those skins. And unfortunately, a lot of unsuspecting people might buy them at those inflated prices. So we've got to be careful, right? Right. So, of course, with the Rustle Rotation, we have the regular skins. Bandito's pants right here only going up to about 70 cents. A fair bit awkward. But again, if we do see the likes of those potential boots and gloves being accepted in the future, all the better for this. And, of course, the likes of the hoodie, which seems to be in the exact same position. Then over to here, we have the Pixel Decay LR300. There is not that much interest in this. You shouldn't be surprised. We literally just had an LR300, but this was accepted last week anyway. Bard has only gone up to 80 cents. That's a bit awkward. And then we have the hard suit helmet, which I forgot to get prepared. Oops. Uh, yeah, this was the last to appear, and it took an hour. To, to appear on the steam market yeah that's only going up to about 50 cents so that's a fair bit awkward i can't imagine these skins are going to retain their value but if we do see the likes of those boots and gloves as i mentioned for these all the better for those uh hoodie and pants here are the abnormals from last night someone just bought out all the frontier rustic garage doors like the only <laughs> the only listings we have are over a hundred dollars oh surely it's worth a hundred dollars i'll just go buy that now <laughs> no don't 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 do that don't do that this is someone who just cleaned out all the stock so um yeah if you look at all the buy orders it's kind of casually just slowly starting to rise up and push up to three dollars with the amount that sold honestly it just feels too little so in the grand scheme of things i can't help but imagine this is going to rise up in price very easily there's only so many of them in circulation all the better for them to rise up in price just to give you a nice bit of a comparison there are twice as many bombshell garage doors and there are three times as much brutalist garage doors so now you can kind of understand that and you can probably understand that this is probably going to be doing quite all right because of it. It's also the cheapest. Well, I mean, it was. <laughs> it was. Right, moving on. Then we have the likes of the hard suit tier two. And as you can see, the kilt, it's doing okay. But will it be all right forever? Sold for $1.49. But I'll just go all the way up to about $1.20 and a little bit higher. But... We shall see if it actually, you know, sticks. Then we got the vest. This was selling for two dollars, and well, the bar has only went up to just barely over a dollar at the moment. There's only listings going down to about three dollars, but we shall see. And then we got the Ronin AK, as you can see right here. The early listings are five dollars, but the bar does well. Last night, we didn't see that much interest. It only went up to a dollar, but someone jumped in and did a $1.40 buy order. Seems to be fairly strong, but for a $2.49 price, I can't imagine it's going to be doing super great. But we shall see, all right, because there's another thing I want to talk about real quickly. We got the rebirth tools right here. So, yep, this is only listed at two dollars ish, but the bar has only really went up to about ninety cents, and same thing here, only up to about ninety cents. Again, will these potentially be manipulated at some point? We shall see. But when you look at all of these skins, they don't have that many listings. 
And I mentioned this a little bit earlier, and I'll mention it again. When you look at the skins that came out literally the week before, I'm talking the ones that only had six days, all of these skins have hardly any listings. And this is something I've noticed for all the skins that came out during November. Not a single skin here has more than 30 listings on the on the Steam market. So do you reckon we might potentially see the exact same type of behavior with these skins? Because by default, with what we saw with that happening here, many of the skins are quite high in price because of that. They're not actually, it's because the only listings that are available are at high prices, but maybe they're going to prosper because of that. With a sheer lack of sales led to a sheer lack of listings. And then if you're desperate, you're probably going to buy them at those prices. So we shall see what potentially happens over the course of the next week or two of these skins, but that's all in the past. Let's start talking about the new skins. And here we are, the newest batch of skins right here and available in front of us right here. Shall we get started? Shall we discuss what happened when these were accepted? So, first things first, the amount of continuations we saw. Neon Vibes, uh, Desert Beast, Abyss, this is a brand new collection. Here's the Hay Sleeping Bag, and uh, then we have the Soul Eater. If you look at the front page right now, you can see Desert Beast was bought out, and we saw that a little bit earlier, didn't we? Neon Vibes Garage Door has been attacked, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So, yeah, we'll talk more about that in a second in regards to the individual skins, but let's now start specifically talking about the skins that are brand new, and we shall discuss where they're going to potentially end up at in terms of an investment. First up, we have the Neon Vibes Sheepman Door. Let's get a good look at this. So, this was brand new it literally appeared over the past weekend straightforward neon design now we discussed this with the likes of garage doors didn't we when we we're trying to figure out when we we're doing the abnormal barges for the uh, neon vibes garage door how well will that garage door potentially fare and looking at all the garage doors i could see that straightforward designs for ne uh, straightforward neon designs for garage doors fared very well like not like hardly a single one was below like two dollars fifty so why don't we look at the likes of the sheet metal doors and see if the same thing applies to that so we'll scroll down we'll go see can we find all of the straightforward neon designs and how are they faring so we're going to actually look by highest price and we're just going to scroll down so initially i see the likes of that evil heart door right there i do remember the likes of the airlock door but it's not exactly doing super great so let's just keep oh look going deep sheet metal door but that's down by 22 percent Oh no, let's just scroll. What do we see? Outer Planet Sheet Metal Door, but that's down by 25%. Uh oh, uh, Neon Cactus Metal Door, down by 44%. Carrot Door, no! <laughs> down 33 That's an Easter theme skin. So I don't think. I don't think we can apply that type of logic with the likes of Sheet Metal Doors. Probably because there's a lot more Sheet Metal Doors in existence. So I can't really give it that boost, I'm afraid. I can't really give it that, like, uh, um, positivity, I guess you could say. Anyway. We should also take a look at all of the sheet metal doors that came out this year specifically, because when you take a look at all of them, what do you see? Oh dear. <laughs> now that one's doing all right, and that one's doing all right, but all the other ones, not so much. So we have to point this out. We're actually very close to Christmas time now. It's literally about four weeks away, and it will literally just like turn, and it, suddenly everybody cares about skins, because there'll be a lot more people playing. Let's just incorporate that. Let's just be aware of this. So right now, uh, a little bit earlier, we had about 90,000 people playing, now it's 65, which is awkward. But with the likes of that upcoming Twitch Rivals event that'll be taking place, especially during the likes of December and whatnot, there's going to be a lot of people watching Rust content. There's, there's potentially going to be a lot of people motivated to want to jump back into Rust and play all over again. Especially, we also have the likes of the uh, in-game Christmas event being introduced again. So maybe everybody feels like jumping back in again. And then they get motivated to play Rust a lot more frequently. That rolls into January. We've got a ton of people playing then, and it, maybe it'll stick around for February. But yeah, that's post-Christmas. Loads of people returning to play the game. The, dem the, all, the demand for all skins increases, and therefore all rust skin prices increase. So whilst this looks bad now, let's take a look at this in about four or five weeks' time, and it might be a fair bit different. But for the likes of this, is it a bit too late? Well, we just literally talked about how, over the past month, throughout all of November, we haven't really seen that many sales. Let's go look at last week. We just saw it, but specifically, look at the amount of sales it had. That right there is a pay-to-win see-through transparent garage door, 11,500 bare minimum sales. Yeah, <laughs> about that. Um, so with what we're currently looking at, it looks like people don't really want to spend that much money, or at least buy a lot of skins at the very least. You could, you could even look at the previous week, so yeah, that was like 17,000 sales. That was still good, but I get the feeling we're probably going to match up to the amount of sales that the Neon Vibes Garage Door had. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but I think that's a good point of where we're going to potentially end up at 
with the likes of the sheet metal door. Now this is doing pretty nice at the moment. If we quickly hop over to here, where is it? Where's that garage door? Is he here? There he is. Yeah. So the sheet metal door is accepted. The garage door had a bit of a spike in demand and a spike in price. This was sitting at about three-ish dollars earlier. It's now up to three dollars seventy. However, as I pointed out earlier, we didn't really have that much stock in the Steam market anyway. If you look at the actual buy orders, well, they didn't really go all the way up to three dollars forty-nine. The price that this sold for in the Rust store just a week or two ago. So. Yeah, that's doing a little bit better in the grand scheme of things. As time goes on, will that do even better? Probably, we shall see. Again, straightforward neon designs for garage doors do tend to do quite all right. But looking at the likes of the sheet metal door, we can probably expect that this is going to do about 15,000 sales. But in the grand scheme of things, that's kind of average, bang average for the amount of sales for a sheet metal door. All sheet metal doors aren't exactly doing super great. Straightforward neon designs for sheet metal doors don't, don't exactly do super great. So my initial reaction is I don't think that sheet metal door right here is going to be doing super great. Um, that was a good generalization, I guess you could say. You can understand how I got to this point. So... The only thing that I'm going to consider looking for now is how many sales this has. Because if it only does like 10,000 sales, maybe my opinion might change a fair bit. But as of now, I'm looking at this abnormal skin and I'm thinking, you know what? I am probably only going to want to do a buy order. That's probably the best answer I can give. I'm not super confident in it. But if it sells hardly anything, my tune might change. So I'd rather wait it out, look at this on Wednesday, make a decision based on the sales, and then I'll think what I'm going to do next. At the very least, abnormal buy orders first, look at the support afterwards, then make a decision if I'm actually going to jump in and buy some. Understood? We good? All right, let's move on. Here's, yeah, let's talk about the likes of Desert Beast Burlap Shirt and Pants. Right, so let's just get this established. How much burlap clothing skins do we normally get? Oh, yeah, you know, uh, nothing, really. <laughs> nothing. So 10 months ago, we had Arctic Protection burlap shirt and pants being accepted. Following that, we also had the burlap shoes and we also had the likes of the burlap head wrap. Now, if we can just quickly get all of that in front of us, because I just want to talk to you in regards to how that turned out. Because it's all in the green at the moment, even the poncho. That We're not going to really consider the poncho because that came at a different time and... That was kind of special. That was like the first modern poncho skin to be accepted and it sold a certain amount. But let's not worry about this. Let's look at this. All right, let's look at this. So this was like the first burlap clothing to be accepted in quite a long time. We were very happy about that. And then everybody bought out a ton of them. And initially we thought, oh no, oh no, that's, that's a fair bit awkward. And well, it didn't matter. It did not matter because it was appreciated People liked it. We didn't get any more. We did not get any more burlap skins. People did try. Skin creators did try. There's been many interesting burlap skins that have been submitted over the past year, but none of them were accepted. So it's a face punch thing. So it's a face punch decision. I don't know. But main point is this never suffered. These skins that you see right here, they have only gradually just slowly just kept increasing in demand, increasing in value. It's just it's just been a nice steady increase in price. Now, of course, you can clearly just straightforward look at it and say, oh, yeah, so that's nice, cheap, affordable um, Arctic uh, camouflage. And it is very good camouflage, very good camouflage, especially if you're kind of hiding, hiding amongst the rocks and whatnot. Not everybody's going to instantly notice you. So anyway, anyway, looking at this. Basically, I think the uh, I think this is going to basically continue happening. We're very likely not going to see a ton of burlap stuff being accepted anytime soon. If anything, we're probably going to see more of the Desert Beast stuff. And Desert Beast, if you take a proper look at it, which we shall do right now, you can probably look at it and suggest, oh, so I guess this is going to probably be good for the desert area. Yeah, you probably will be thinking that. And I think many other people will be thinking that too. It's probably not as light as you'd like it to be, but at the end of the day, in a nice shaded spot and whatnot, it's probably still good enough. So, regardless, it's a brand new potential primitive set. And the only person to have successfully built up a proper primitive set this year was, funnily enough, one on Jay himself, Pirate Collection. There you go. So we had the likes of the bandana and the poncho. We had hide. We had a hat. We had some shoes. Yeah, we had basically everything there. Now, what will happen next? What will happen next? Are we going to get hide clothing? Are we going to get the same thing with Arctic with the likes of burlap shoes and uh, uh, head wrap and whatnot? Well... You, within your own power, can go to the workshop pages right now and suggest some ideas. Say, hey, cool acceptance. What are you making next? Or say, sit there and say, I I need I need some high clothing. Can you make high clothing? I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that for the collection. So, you know, you have the power to do so. Feel free to go and ask. But be polite. Be straightforward, all right? 
he understand the situation. And, you know, why not Jay's already... I wouldn't be surprised if he's already thinking about what he can do next. But regardless, you know how this usually plays out. If we see a continuation appear, all the better for the skins that already exist. And yes, with the likes of the uh, Poncho and the Bandana today, they have spiked demand, spiked the price. They, both of them were cleaned out at one point. Now, we're at that point now where many people have noticed that they are getting bought crazily. So more listings have appeared, but <laughs> they're in a much better position than what they were earlier. This was sitting at about 60, 70 cents earlier. Now, ooh, it's doing a whole lot better. The poncho, like I said, this poncho was completely cleaned out. There was a there was a point when none of them were on the Steam market. Now it's $4. Now, if you happen to own any of these, chat, if you happen to own any of these, I'll be honest with you, wait at least a day or so. Wait until the weekend. When we had the hard suit last week, I saw the price of hard suit increase ever so nicely, but it dipped because so many people list, uh, listing them. But then it went back up in price at the end of uh, Friday because, you know, that got bought out and then everyone who wanted to sell theirs or buy theirs got through it. But there were still more people who, you know, they only, you know, uh, people who play Rust, you know, they're probably working during the week. They probably can only play during the weekend. So that's when they got in. That's when they thought, oh, yeah, I should go buy some of those skins. And yeah, so if you kind of wait it out, a little bit, sell during the weekend, you're probably going to be able to sell these for a much better profit. Potentially, it's up to you. But yeah, there is there is definitely interest in this. There is definitely demand. And now we have to question what's going to happen next to these two skins. So, like I said, especially with the Arctic collection, throughout all of this year, I saw many interesting burlap and primitive skins being submitted this year, and they were all turned down. You know, or they, you know, they just weren't accepted. That would probably be the better way of explaining it. But um, yeah, what's the likelihood we're going to see some more burlap uh, shirt and pants being accepted anytime soon? Maybe for Christmas. That's the only instance that I could see that potentially happening because uh, with with like the Christmas rust store, it's a bit goofy. At the very least, they're going to be heavily gimmicked towards um, Christmas, so they're not going to do good outright by themselves anyway. But I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some burlap stuff being made for Christmas time. Just don't be surprised by that whatsoever. But yeah, with the likes of this, for a, a potential regular rust store in the future, I can't imagine anything else is going to be accepted anytime soon. All the better for these two skins then. Mr. Wine and Jay? He might produce a new uh, continuation. That would be nice. So everything that I've just said definitely puts these skins in a position where it's like, oh, that's looking pretty good. <laughs> that's looking pretty good. Now, need I remind you that the burlap shirt, the Arctic burlap shirt and pants, sold a ridiculous amount, and they still did all right. We are not seeing many sales at all at the moment. I would be surprised if this potentially struggles to reach 15,000 sales. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. But if that struggles to sell, that's even better. Even better. All the better for it to rise up in price. I love saying that, don't I? But you know what I mean. If we don't see that much sales in comparison to what could effectively be peak demand in just about two months' time, it's easily going to rise up in price. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know what I mean. And then again, uh, will it compare nicely to the likes of the... Oh, look, that went up now. Uh, will it compare nicely with the amount of sales these had? So this had 16,000 bare minimum sales. This only had 11,700. Well, like I said, all the better for it to rise up in price. So, yeah, everything's looking interesting. You have to keep an eye on the workshop now. You have to. And like I said, feel free to hop in to the comments pages on the workshop pages of these two and suggest some ideas. I don't think Wine on Jay would be upset if you said something. At the very least, I'm pretty sure he's very happy right now. And I'm pretty sure <laughs> he's going to be very happy with the Met sales. But again, we don't fully know what that's going to uh, reach up to. So, if you're a little bit cautious, don't jump in and buy them immediately. At least, you know, the ones that you want to sell. If you're looking to buy some stock to sell for profit, I don't blame you. I'm actually actively thinking, yeah, I might go buy a decent amount of this, but... Even then, I don't expect a ton of sales. So at the very least, you could wait till Wednesday. We could look at the amount of sales. We can figure out a price. But I'm honestly thinking this is just going to be okay. Like, I'm not imagining it's going to get a ridiculous amount of sales. So everything is looking pretty sweet. By all means, go buy some now if you can. It's too late to get that poncho and bandana. Well, bandana's not that expensive, but the poncho's pushing up to $5 already. So uh, yeah, things are looking pretty sweet. Thing things are looking pretty sweet. So... I think you could just go buy some, to be honest. Um, again, if you're cautious, wait till Wednesday. Then make a decision. You could buy them then instead. Because, again, not rushing into anything is probably the smartest idea, and I've said that many times. It's not abnormal, but we can still take our time. 
And if you like it, buy it, use it. Support the uh, skin creator. Make it known that you'd like to see more so Face Punch actually does accept it, potentially. We should see, we should see. So, yeah, everything's looking good. I can't say anything else, to be honest. Everything's looking good. And I look forward to finding out what's next. And at the very least, I could take a look at one of the images in which you can see the full set being worn. Where is it? There you go. And that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. What do you think? You a fan? Do you like it? What else needs to be made? Uh huh. Probably. <laughs> He's gonna get sunburned. Why not, Jay? Honestly, God. So yeah, positive, happy. Shall we move on? Let's talk about the Abyss AR. Right. This is opening up to be very interesting because with the Abyss collection, not only do we have a nice abundant amount of deplorables, not only do we have a full set of clothing and armor, and you know maybe we'll see boots and gloves at some point, but we're now delving into weapons. Oh yes, and if you know Little Ranger well, you'd know he's pretty good at making weapons and tools and whatnot. Do I need to show you that? Because I can easily show you that. Through the numerous years that he's been active, he's been producing some very interesting, colourful, snazzy, cool-looking designs. Need I say more? So yeah, he's actually the uh, creator with the second most skins accepted. He's made the likes of Dragon Rage, Toy Collection, and the recent UAP pilot stuff. But point is, from here on now, you could potentially expect the likes of a SAR, an MP5, uh, MP49. <laughs> you know, you get the idea. We're going to be seeing some weapons and tools being made now. And I like that. And I look forward to that. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see an Abyss Rock. You, you, you look at the little monster. So yeah, you know how there's always the monster and all the skins. I want to see what it's going to look like on a rock. That it, It's going to be my own little, it's going to be my little pet Abyss Monster thingy. Yeah, bite your finger. <laughs> little Ranger, I'd like to see that, please please so yeah it looks like we potentially might have a goofy pet rock on the horizon but regardless you understand what i mean all the potential weapons all the potential tools are all within the grasp um things are looking optimistic and the more weapons and whatnot that are accepted all the better for the likes of the uh well everything else here um I, I, this is gonna be a full proper big fat collection i'm talking like no mercy i'm talking like tempered collection you know it gets a bit of everything and that's nice and it's becoming well established will there be a point where it starts to slow down it's probably soon like normally when it gets to around like 15 or 16 skins that's where we get to a point where we're probably only going to see like an abyss skin being accepted like once every three or so months potentially it happens it does like look at look at uh black gold this year that's a good example, isn't it? Black Gold, we saw like a one or two skins being accepted and then it went quiet. But then again, then again, it was the skin creator who kind of like stopped doing it so much, but cool. All right, let's talk more specifically about the AK because first up, <laughs> did you see my reaction earlier? <laughs> I was like, oh no, of course, of course they accepted another AK, but I do have to point this out. How many AKs have we accepted this year? All right, let's just show this real quickly. What do you see? Oh no, oh no. <laughs> Right, we've had a lot of AKs being given to us this year, at the very least. 37. I'm talking in regards to skins that were in the Rust stores and, of course, skins that were given away as Twitch drops and whatnot. Also, you know, the uh, special DLC ones. So there's plenty of AKs to look at, and that also leads to a problem because, well, if there's so many options, why would I want to buy this or that one when I can just, you know, have... Yeah, yeah you get what I mean. Um, there's too many options. There's too many AKs. And, well, what's going to happen to this? At the very least, at the very least, I look at this AK and I think it actually will be doing better than most AKs. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to retain its value, though. So for the same price, if I go to highest price, I could make some comparisons. What do I see? For around $3, it's already in, like, the highest quarter, so that's a bit questionable. But, yeah, for the same price, a little bit more, I could buy the Retro Wave AR. I could probably go buy a Kiss AR if I spent a little bit more. If I go down a fair bit, I could get... I could get for cheaper the Chameleon AR. I could get the Midnight Dream. I could get the Redemption AR. I could get the Black Gold AR. So, yeah, you do understand for around the same price, I could get other options. I'm not hating on it. I'm just pointing out that's what people are probably going to think. And you should be aware that people aren't loyal to their AKs. There's always another AK. Like, you know, we just had this AK. Where is he? Where is he? Scroll down, scroll down. Ronin AK. Here you are. So he's all right at the moment. But we just got another cool, shiny looking AK. <gasps> Throw that one away, get the new one! <laughs> that happens every single week. <laughs> that happens every single week. So, <laughs> sorry. That's a bit dramatic. Um, so, I can imagine that this might potentially have some problems initially, but I can see it doing quite all right in the future. Look at the design. I must repeat, that does not glow in the dark. It's even mentioned right there. So, do you reckon that would be appreciated? The weird, crazy-looking monster with the teeth all along the ammo and all on the sides. What do you reckon? And again, we've got 
clothing and armor to pair it up with. Do you want to run around like a beastly alien type of eldritch horror? Well, you know, Rust players are there anyway, aren't they? So, <laughs> Alright, so things are looking okay, but what am I going to do? At the very least, that's abnormal. Alright, oh god, he said it again. But yeah, of course, of course. I have to be cautious, alright? Maybe it might not sell that much. Which is fine, because it's, you know, it's a very well-established collection, so that would be okay. That would actually mean it would probably rise up in price a whole lot easier. There is one good comparison I could do, and that is the uh, Dragon Rage collection that's also made by Little Ranger. Now, Dragon Rage, when it came out, was in demand. It was well-established, and when we got the AK, it was after we got all the clothing and armor. Right now, that is sitting at $2. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, it sold for $3.49. That AK over there, the Abyss one, selling for $3. So maybe we could make a comparison to this, maybe? Because, uh, like, with the likes of Pirate Collection coming out this year, it basically stole the thunder of all of the Dragon Rage Collection. And I'm not joking. So we do want to look at, like, the history of this to get a better outlook. So right now, $2. But if we look at the sales history, what do we see? It had some very nice... It had a very nice post-Christmas, as you can see right there. Went all the way up to about $4 plus. Went down a fair bit, peaked up a bit during the summer, but then Pirate Collection appears. And you know, <laughs> so, I think it could basically follow the same style and pattern of what we saw there with that AK. That would mean I do kind of expect it to kind of stagnate for a while. I can imagine it kind of going below its rustle price for at least a while, but I could imagine it does quite right during January at the very least. It's very close to January, so yeah. I'd rather see how many sales happen, and then we move on from there. All right, understood. So abnormal. We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. We're gonna do the abnormal wilders first. Then we're gonna talk about what we're gonna do next. Sounds good. Move on. All right. Damascus face mask and chest plate. Very useful to see that they are abnormal. All right, because this is a brand new collection, and we do have to question what we're gonna do in regards to this. Because when you take a proper look at this, it's all just metallic and whatnot. And I'm not hating on the design. Like, if you take a look at the face mask, it actually looks very cool. Like, giga, look at that. Looks cool. Looks neat. I like the. Uh, design of all of that the steel and then we look at the face mask you can see how that looks very nice very cool but we just literally saw the likes of the hard suit collection get finished didn't we and maybe people aren't going to be actively going crazy for a full metallic set but then again it does look cool i can appreciate that well other people appreciate that that's the that's the main thing if there's no active like uh <laughs> if there are is there, if there are no customers where would the money be made that's the problem. So, again, we might just have to take our time and see if there's genuine demand for this. Cool-looking face mask. Cool-looking chest plate. But we've seen many other skins in the past. All right? I'm a fair bit cautious. It's not, like, super colourful, because at, at the very least, you might not like that, but a lot of people do, and we tend to see them sell very nicely, which is awkward. <laughs> but like I said, literally, just literally, we just saw the likes of Hard Suit Tier 2 being finished, and it's very approachable and very affordable, at least at the moment, somewhat. But you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Will this actually catch? Will this progress? And will we actually see the likes of Tier 2 and Hoodie and Pants being made? So again, you've got to take a look at the workshop and be the brave person to step up and ask in the comment section. I like this. Well done. Congratulations on getting accepted. But uh, what are you going to make next? And I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Uh, Multi Arhat Boris and uh, Marco, his friend who helps him. Yeah, they've they've been through this process before. They are going to make more skins. I wouldn't be surprised. We are expecting to see more being made. It's just a matter of will it happen. All right, will they actually get accepted? This is a brand new active collection to keep an eye out for. But you have to put the effort in to look to workshop and whatnot. By default, yes, there will be a spike in demand, spike in price if we do see more core pieces being accepted and whatnot. Even boots and gloves, even boots and gloves. But will it happen? If these don't sell that much, maybe Face Punch isn't super confident. You should also take into consideration how many normal Rust stores do we have left? We have November 30, and we have December 7, and that's it. That is it. So maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe it doesn't happen anytime soon. If anything, now that I've just like pointed that out and even reminded myself, I'm actually not that confident in it now. Because you have to remember... If people, people uh, at the moment, people, in, uh, other investors, I guess you could say, if they don't instantly see a continuation being accepted, if they don't get that instant gratification, they're just unloading it. They, 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 they're, <laughs> they're impatient. They'll just unload it and they'll move on and do whatever other strange investment they might do in the future. And knowing that and see, having seen that many times in the past, I probably will just stick with Dunabada there. And I want to see, first of all, I want to see how many sales that happens. But like, 
all of those words I've just said there probably hasn't like motivated you wanting to buy it. By all means, if you like the designs, if you like what you see, please consider buying it. Please consider supporting the skin creators and whatnot. Keep them motivated to keep wanting to put out very interesting designs in the future. And uh, yeah, you understand the process. Support them. But yeah. Um, in terms of wanting to buy multiples of these as an investment, eh, I'm questioning it. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to start talking about the Hay sleeping bag. And what do we see? A brand new collection getting established. So the Hay storage earlier, it didn't have that many. Uh, it still doesn't have that many. This sold for $2.49. It hasn't really sold that much. So it's just kind of there. It's just kind of there. Um, oh, good. <laughs> yes, very much so. But here is the uh, here's the sleeping bag. And I'll give it to it, you know. Maybe there's some role players that would appreciate this. I could see that happening, you know, just sleeping on hay and whatnot. We need a hay rug. Michael, uh, skin crate that is, Michael CD, we're, we're going to need a hay rug. Do we have a hay rug? <laughs> yeah, we're quite literally going to need a hay rug now because we, you know, people are going to probably want to build a barn and a role play server and you can achieve that with this. So, yeah, consider doing that. But yeah, potentially, could we see a, uh, could we see? A collection being built. Can we see a deplorable collection getting established? Oh, yes. Um, how many times have we said that this year? Far too many. And has that actually progressed into something? Most of the time, no. <laughs> it's a nice looking skin, but I can't imagine sleeping bags are doing crazy at the moment. Um, we just had a very cool looking one. That's the funny thing. And will we potentially see Twitch drops coming out soon that are going to be sleeping bags? That's also going to be a potential problem as well. We're going to have to keep an eye on the workshop, aren't we? So things are awkward. We shall see how it progresses, but I'm going to wait until Wednesday until I make a decision on that. I'm not 100% confident in it, if that makes sense. But at the very least, keep an eye on the workshop over the course of the next weekend, uh, this current weekend as we reach it, and uh, yeah, we'll see how things turn out with that. We'll make considerations next Wednesday, uh, blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. So we'll move on. Thanksgiving turkey furnace. Right, I've got to point this out to you. It's quite funny. <laughs> Zinc was the only person, the only person to produce a Thanksgiving themed skin this week. Like, uh, as you can see here, my Rust Workshop skin checks, which I would definitely point many to you, many of you towards, because if you always want to stay up to date in regards to all the new potential skins that might potentially be accepted for future Rust stores, please consider watching my Rust Workshop skin checks. Um, yeah, out of all of the skins that we saw here, only one of them was Thanksgiving themed. I'm talking the absolute brand newest skins. That one right there, refresh, there he is. Da -da. Yeah, so I guess he wins by default. <laughs> Good stuff there, Zinc. Smart thinking. So it's a very gimmicky furnace skin. Will that do all right in the future? Because it's not going to be Thanksgiving tomorrow, or the day after that, or the day after that, not for another 365 days or so. Awkward, yes, very awkward. Now, it's a very, 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 very goofy looking furnace skin. Actually, could that potentially work out in its favour? Maybe, maybe. It's all nice and roasted. Oh, don't you want to take a bite out of it? Oh. <laughs> what did you... What do you fill your turkeys with? I don't know. I'm not American. I don't know what people get up to. But like, what things do you actually put in it? Just stuffing, or do you add other things to it? Uh, you. Oh no. You, uh, what was it? Um, what's that thing you like? There's 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 one recipe where you stick a duck and a chicken in it as well, isn't it? Something like that. <laughs> oh well, you know what, what's better than normal meat? Just add more meat. Oh, even better. Fill it with meat. Oh yeah. Um, but anyway. Cool looking skin, but like, is it actually going to hold? I don't think so. And then when you take a look at all the furnace skins that have come out this year, and there have been goofy ones as well, haven't there? And then you take a look at, oh no. <laughs> we had an alien one, we had a pug one, we had a capybara. They're not doing good. We had a frog one. We had a frog one. Do you remember when this was the goofiest thing we saw all of this year? Well, other goofy things appeared and didn't hold i'm afraid did not hold maybe these skins will improve over the course of the next two months but looking at this at first glance i am not not confident in buying tons of these as an investment so again we can just wait it out we can see how things turn out um i'll be honest with you i'm probably just gonna stick with doing a barter but again look, let's just wait until wednesday let's see how things play out maybe people do appreciate this because again i can see it working out as a goofy skin but we literally just had a furnace, didn't we? Maybe it doesn't sell that much. All the better for it to rise up in price. I said it again, but, you know, that's the only positive I can see with it, potentially. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Shut up! Oh, it's called a turducken. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> right, Soul Eater Sir, uh, part of the Soul Eater collection. So far, we've seen the revolver and we've seen the Sir. Well, there were some tools and some other skins produced. I think there's a pump shotgun. But anyway, regardless, 
congratulations, De La Raya, getting established as a skin creator. That gets a few acceptances every single year, so good stuff to you. But I do have to be critical in regards to Sar skins at the moment, because, well, what do we see? We have the Chameleon Sar doing all right. We have the Redemption Sar doing all right. We have the Arctic Skull Sar doing all right, and I'm not surprised by those. For example, with the Arctic Skull Sar, if you'd go take a look down here, Many people want to buy the comic Sar, but it's too expensive. It's pure white, very good in the Arctic areas, but you know what? A much more affordable option's right there, and it has a useful red aim site, so people are starting to appreciate that, and people are buying it out, so that's nice. These two skins are part of a very well-established collection, and they're very nice and shiny, and people like that, and people buy that, so that's not too hard to understand. All of these other skins... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, looking at the likes of this Sar... It's a neat looking design. If anything, I could sit here and say it's a bit Halloween-ish, sort of. You know what I mean? It's trying to be scary in a way. And, well, maybe that might not help it out. So aim down the site. What do we see? It's just a normal aim site. Um, Yeah, this is a little bit awkward. Because I, I, I want to support Mr. Dinneroy, but it's like... I can't imagine it's going to retain its value, if anything. Like, again, when you look at all the SARS, you can understand what I mean. If it doesn't stand out, if it's not like uh, <laughs> imitating another skin, then, yeah, you can see there's going to be potential problems with this. This very likely might end up going all the way down to a dollar, which many of the recent SARS have done. Very close to a dollar and, uh, and below and below. So, yeah, uh, that might simply be a case of doing a straightforward buy order. But we will wait and see what happens over the course of the next few days and look at this on Wednesday and make a decision then. Yeah, I'm not super confident in buying tons of them. But rarely am I ever confident to jump in and buy out some skins directly. I typically normally do buy orders only. But yeah, that was uh, that was all the skins. That was everything. There is some genuine positivity for a few of them there. There are some questionable things for the others. But overall, like, I'm not upset. I'm fine with that. We saw some interesting continuations appear. Maybe not every single skin that you ever so loved and demanded to see wasn't accepted. I get that. That's fine. But we have only got two normal Rustors, and then we have Christmas. That is three weeks away. That is three weeks away. And in less than three weeks' time, we're going to have the Twitch Rivals event taking place. So if you aren't fully aware of all of that, Twitch Rivals will be taking place. And we've just been informed recently, with courtesy, uh, <clears throat> with great thanks from the likes of Rustified, always keeping on Rustified to be aware of all the new content potentially coming out. It's always nice and displayed to in front of you and whatnot. But over down to here, you can see that we've got some interesting looking uh, Twitch Rivals content. So if you aren't fully aware of this, there is a special... Um, affiliate slash partner thing going on um to get this special twitch rivals desk during the uh was is, is between october 8th to the october no 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 <clears throat> sorry i got it wrong between december december 8th i think to december 31st if you watch uh a streamer potentially me um who is selected to have this as a twitch drop you have to go to their uh, to their stream and you have to donate two subs and then you get the skin you get a special code so that is the rule. And I know that sounds a little bit weird, but that is <laughs> that is the answer. I could quickly find this real quickly. If I just scroll down a fair bit, I'll show you the uh, thing mentioned. <sighs> I'll be here for a second. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that was when it was listed. <laughs> hey, I'm always aware of all the new skins, so you should consider looking at my Twitter. Uh, it's in the description of this very video that you're watching, so if you get a link to it, it's all there. Come on, where's that thing? I literally retweeted it not too long ago. There it is. All right, here you are. So this is the special thing that they're doing. They're doing a special campaign. And yeah, quite literally, you're going to need to uh, subscribe or... Oh, it's uh, December 7th. Well, anyway, you're going to need to give two subs. Give two subs. So um, I'll link this. I'll link this in the description of the video so you can see it for yourself. If you stream yourself, uh, you probably want to apply. So consider doing that. And yeah, you get the whole idea. You understand the whole situation. So uh, that is something that will be taking place over the course of early December. And then, of course, throughout December. Uh, December. But uh, oh, back over to here. We also have that hazmat suit. Now, we're not 100% sure what's going on with the purple hazmat suit. Maybe it's just going to be a straightforward uh, Twitch drop during the likes of the, um, the uh, Twitch Rivals event. Maybe it's only going to be used by the people taking part in the Twitch Rivals event. We're not 100% sure yet. But we'll gradually eventually find out. Of course, over the course of the next couple of weeks, we're going to probably find out whose Twitch drops are going to be the Twitch drops. I'm talking about the submissions, which of the submissions are going to be Twitch drops. So if I quickly hop back over to here, I quickly hop back over to here, go to the Rust Workshop, scroll up a little bit. There you go. 
someone has a very notable collection so yep as you can see right here i'm on the rust workshop hover over browse click collections there's a guy called jojo something where are you jojo he's here i can smell him there he is yep this guy has been keeping track of all the uh, Twitch drop submissions that have appeared somewhat recently. There's 26 skins here. Again, I must confirm this just to point this out to all of you. None of these skins are 100% guaranteed to be Twitch drops. Um, so just scroll down through here. And yeah, we've got some like newer ones that have appeared. But yeah, as I slowly rise up, I won't be surprised that the Twitch rivals make, you know, the skins that are quite literally called Twitch rival skins. I won't be surprised that fridge skin gets accepted as a Twitch drop. Uh, the uh, boots and of course the beanie hat. I'm pretty confident that they are definitely going to be the Twitch drops, the generic drops at the very least. There might be more. I'm not 100% sure. But like I said, it's only official when Face Punch announces it. And at the very least, again, you probably want to look at TGG. So if I go over to TGG, uh, so not this, but if you go to his workshop here, you can scroll down, you can see the Twitch Rivals Drops collection. And these are, these are at least official. So there's the boots. So I do think that these skins are definitely going to be Twitch Drops. So get a good look at that. There's 10 teams this year, and I do believe uh, each team will have a special Twitch Drop. One of them will be a hoodie, so that's why you see so many hoodies. And then they have an extra skin on the side. So I believe the captains will have the special skin and then you watch everybody else in the team to get their hoodie, if that makes sense. And then, of course, on the side as well, we also have the generic drops and the Twitch Rivals skins. So Twitch Rivals beanie hat, Twitch Rivals boots and very likely potentially that Twitch Rivals fridge. So that is the expectation. It's all good. It's all understood, hopefully. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's much else I can say. Um... Uh, I think that's everything I needed to say. Don't forget to consider looking at the likes of the commits. Um, it really does look like potentially we're going to see uh, a legacy DLC pack. What do you mean? Uh, it's been mentioned many times already by many other people. But if you aren't aware, we are uh, about to have Rust's 10th anniversary. Rust first released in December of 2013. And we've been, we've been noticing many, men, uh, many mentions of a legacy bow a legacy furnace a legacy shack and there was another thing that i can't remember but there might be like a special pack that you can buy it's probably going to be exactly like the uh, base decor pack that literally just came out at the very beginning of november so who knows what it's going to be like i mean if are people is everybody is everybody going to appreciate it i don't know you've also got the metal detector which very likely will probably be prepared and ready in about two weeks time which will be nice i guess <laughs> so yeah it's all a uh, Frontier High Calibre Revolver. Oh, I didn't notice that one. Wow, we're really... Okay, well... Oh, <laughs> oh all right then. Um, all right, I guess we're really leaning into the, uh, into the cowboy theme stuff. Thanks, Tom. Right, so, uh, yeah, and we got the shotgun. Yeah, there's yes, lots of interesting things. But you'd only be aware of all of this if you constantly keep an eye on the commits. It doesn't take that much time. You just, you know, just go over here. Maybe I'm going to have to link this in the description as well. So maybe I'll do that as well. All right, so I'll do that as well. Um, but there were recent mentions in regards to... Um, is it here? No, no. Ah, oh, damn it. I've lost it. But I definitely had a link earlier mentioning that they've recently worked on the Frontier Building Skin. So I get the feeling we're going to get Frontier Building Skin and the Gingerbread Skin in December. But remember, the Gingerbread Skin is only going to be available during the Christmas event. When the actual in-game Christmas content is added to Rust, that is like when the Gingerbread's going to be given away. And remember, it's free for everybody to use. You'll be aware of that. But the Frontier Building Skin, the Wooden Building Skin, where is it? Still haven't seen it yet. It's recently, it's recently been worked on, so maybe it's going to be soon or maybe it's going to be the new year. We don't know. We do not know. So it's confusing, but again, just keep an eye on all of this and we'll see what happens over the course of God knows when. <laughs> we don't know when, when. All right, cool. So that's basically all been said. What's on the front page? Because I've been talking for like almost an hour and uh, whack is that? What? What's that doing there? It might be a pump. Remember, please be aware of this. Um, many people are buying out very old random skins that you very likely don't even remember or can't even like remember in your mind whatever um because they're going to want to pump them during post christmas why hedge why are they going to do that because you wouldn't know you won't notice it during post christmas because many skins spike them on spike in price insanely with the boost of the player count and well it's a lot easier to hide manipulations 
and then you know they'll rap they'll rapidly inflate the value of random old skins that have no value but if they own everything then you probably won't be able to notice the difference and unfortunately it does catch out a lot of people more specifically third party sites and gambling sites that's not us maybe combine the building skin with the legacy weapons it might actually that actually might be the case you know i thought the frontier building skin was going to be part of the frontier building uh, the frontier base decor pack but that didn't happen i don't know but with what we just saw there fraggy with what we just saw here, the high caliber revolver, maybe that gets paired with the, um, wait, more pickaxes? What? Do you see what I mean? We just noticed some new things being mentioned. <laughs> Enabled long resource, concrete pickaxe, stone pickaxe, ice pick, diver pickaxe, prototype pick... Well, well, well. <laughs> pickaxe collection. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> All right. All right, I think we're done. I think we're done. So, yeah, things are looking interesting, but you've got to keep yourself informed and whatnot. So, it is what it is. Right, so, uh, Dave the Diver Pickaxe. That would be cool. That would be cool. That's a comfy game. I definitely would recommend that. Consider buying it during the Steam sale. Chat, is there anything that you might want to ask, or do you reckon it's all nice and wrapped up? Do you at least want to sit there and say goodbye to YouTube? So, uh, yeah, that's it. If we stay informed with everything, we'll be prepared for everything. Somewhat. <laughs> oh, uh, you should. If you're also invested into the likes of uh, the Counter-Strike market, yeah, keep an eye on all of your builders because the Counter-Strike market is going down pretty bad. Very bad. Um, which is pretty good to consider investing into when you get all of those Ruskin profits. Over the course of post-Christmas, if, Counter uh, if the Counter-Strike economy is still pretty bad, well, it's not always going to be bad. So you could jump in and buy into some like interesting cases and whatnot because uh, Counter-Strike cases only appreciate over time. So I guess I'm going to have to make a video at some point in later December where I talk about diversifying with your profits, like invest into this or that and, uh, you know, put it away and then sell it at the right time in the future, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, you don't have to only put your profits towards Ruskins and whatnot. You can put it towards other economies and I'll guard you through it. You understand. So... I asked if you wanted to play the game here. Uh, 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 I don't know what's happened to you, Warhead. You need help. <laughs> all right, so uh, that's a wrap. That's it. That's the end. So thank you very much for watching uh, all of that. But, you know, there's there's a lot of information just, like, forced into your head there. But, uh, yeah, stay optimistic. One more month to go. Then it's Christmas. Well, actually, no. Uh, we, we, we <laughs> oh, there's always enough things to talk about. Uh, literally, as of next week... As of next week, and I can quickly support this, usually at the very, very, very end of November, that is the time where we can start selling our Christmas skins. That is the time where people turn up and want to start uh, buying Christmas skins. And as you can see right here, right in front of you, this was me last year. November 28, 2022. That is when I started. And as I progressed, I ended up selling lots and lots of Christmas skins, and I ended up making lots and lots of money. And then, and then post Christmas happened, and then I just bought a whole bunch of stuff, and in the end, I made like twenty thousand plus dollars worth of sales. It was, it was fun. It was fun. I like buying things. It was fun. <laughs> right, that's it. So next week, Christmas begins, sort of. Well, at least selling the stuff. So I hope you'll look forward to that. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I really need the money. I really do. <laughs> right, see ya.